Okay, today we have to recap a thriller where Oklahoma got the W against Baylor and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, we're going to recap, analyze, talk about OU's dramatic 25 point from come from behind victory against Baylor, undefeated Baylor. And I got some opinions about this, and we're going to talk about how it was going for the first, oh, I don't know. Two hours, but like 30 minutes of game time in which everybody wanted to pull their hair out if they were bleeding crimson and cream. But first, I want to encourage you, sign up for my newsletter. I got a banger coming out. If you do so, between now and December 7th, you can win the Hertz Lamp, which uh, got a lot more value after tonight, right? There's a link in the description below where you can sign up for this game, oh, oh, for this newsletter. This game, however, oh my God, were we not all just kind of doing this with our fist almost immediately Oklahoma goes up three to zero at 10 12 left to play in the first quarter and that was the last lead it would have until about three minutes left no one minute left to play against Baylor after going down 28 to three and it was bad Charlie Brewer and that Baylor offense looked unstoppable, but more to the point, Oklahoma's defense looked like an absolute dumpster fire. Could not get any penetration. DeLarian Turner Yell was caught out of position. Buki was making really stupid decisions. Parnell Motley couldn't cover. Trey Brown couldn't cover. Jaden Davis got beat on a go route. Denzel Mims was looking like an all Big 12 player for the 19th year in a row because that's how long he's been in this friggin' league. And then, ba <sighs> baby, Jalen, baby, Jalen, baby. You can't, you can't keep, keep putting the ball on the ground like this, baby. Like, you, you can't. He put the ball on the ground, and I got people talking about, yo, how is he not down with the ball on the ground? He, the, the, the ball didn't cause the fumble. Jalen caught the fumble, number one. Then you got Jalen throwing picks. There were six fumbles in this game. Oklahoma had five of them. Lost two of them. And this is after I had written this story on OUinsider.com that was like, yo, Baylor has fumbled the ball 17 times and lost eight of them. The only team that has lost more fumbles this season in the Big 12 was TCU. So I was going, this is a turnover game for Oklahoma. This is a game for which they should have takeaways. And they had them. They had them late, but they had them. Look, first, you got you got the pick late from Nick Benito, who just let one slip through his hands. The second time, he said, nah, I got this. Then Baylor puts the ball on the ground. Oklahoma recovers it. But not before our man's. Jalen Hurts looks like he's going to walk across the end zone, going to walk in for six, and he fumbles the ball half a yard before he gets across the goal line. It's Baylor football. And it felt like that kind of night. And this at this game, that was the most well-attended game at McLean Stadium in the history of Baylor. 52,000-plus showed up for this. It was a game day event. It was Matt Rule being 9-0 after getting there, going 1-11, turning around that dumpster fire that was Baylor football through its own doing, by the way. And it was a great game. And it was an undefeated Baylor team for which Oklahoma's not going to get any credit for beating because they won 34 to 31 in a game for which they were a 10 and a half point favorite at kickoff. But boy, does that beat the hell out of what was going to happen left. Because last week, Iowa State felt like a really bad win. 42 41, same Iowa State team goes and beats Texas late. So it doesn't feel that bad. And then Baylor had beaten everybody that they had played, right? And I had this tweet about how this league has cannibalized itself. Because West Virginia beat K-State today, right? And Oklahoma State got beat by Baylor, but Oklahoma State beat Texas Tech. Texas Tech damn near beat TCU, but TCU beat Texas. We can keep going all the way through it. Even Kansas got a win against Texas Tech this year. But this game, which was for Big 12 supremacy, because now with both teams being 9-1, and one, both teams having a loss in conference play, Oklahoma is now in the driver's seat for the Big 12 championship game and looks like it could clinch a spot in the Big 12 championship here pretty quickly if it hasn't already, depending on how things break down. I got to go and check the math on that. I'm probably wrong. But I think with the win against TCU, they're obviously going to get in regardless of what they might do against Oklahoma State. But you, you want to win out because Oklahoma is still trying to get into the college football playoff. And as much as I don't necessarily think they're going to get there, especially depending on what people think about Utah and Oregon going forward, Despite what has happened to Tua Tagovailoa, for which I have another upload going, but I made an upload about that immediately after it happened. You should go check that out. 
link in the description or excuse me link above or wherever you see the links probably in the suggested on the other side but look the other thing that I kind of want to underscore about this was Oklahoma could not have started worse 53 yards of offense start the game to Baylor's 164 yards Baylor looked like Captain Marvel after she ripped the governor off her neck and decided no 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 I run this like, that's how it felt. That's how it looked. The Baylor defense was flying around. James Lynch was having his way with Eric Swenson. Bravey and Roy was just crushing in Creed Humphrey, who had a botch snap and didn't look as good as I would have liked him to look. You see, Tyrese Robinson played piss-poor football. But the freshmen, the true freshman wideouts, Austin Stogger had two catches, both of them touchdown passes. When Jane Hazelwood finally got an opportunity to go out there and shine, he got... A catch for 16 yards, right? Theo Weiss coming up big with a TD late, right? I mean, we're looking around. We're going, where are the puppies? Because this is a game in which CeeDee Lamb didn't play. Like, we all thought CeeDee Lamb might have played. And I, you know, I got some inklings. There's some rumors that he wasn't going to play based on the concussion that he got last week. But since he played in that game after suffering the concussion, you're like, no, it's fine. But apparently, he's out for a medical issue for which we can speculate on what that might be. But what he said to Maria Taylor before the game was, I'm going to play. So everybody thought he was going to play. And then he ain't play. And he ain't have his helmet. And by the second half, he wasn't even dressed out. So he was a glorified decoy for which we won. All right, cool. Maybe Jaden Hazelwood, Theo, we trade the bridges, get all these targets. No, Lincoln going to run out. A.D. Miller, Nick Basquin, to which we're going. Link, what is you doing, baby? And credit to Lincoln. He figured out Baylor's defense. He figured out what Phil Snow was doing. And he put the puppies in with Nick Basquin and A.D. Miller. A.D. Miller actually did do his job. And Lee Morris, my God. Lee Morris has been a man among men since Grant Calcaterra has gone down. Matter of fact, let me check the stats on him right quick. Because that dude had me feeling all kinds of goods about him. Making critical catches on third down. Kennedy Brooks, you the man. No Trey Sermon in this game. You said, nah, I got this. Ramondre Stevenson put the ball on the ground, but it's okay. He recovered it. So Lee Morris had seven catches for 86 yards. And Rambo had five for 50. A.D. Miller had three for 47. But Brooks, 18 carries, 93 yards, 5.2 yards per carry. Jaden, Jalen... 27 carries, 114 yards, 297 yards passing, four tutties, 30 of 42. Jalen looks piss poor out there, still puts up numbers. This game was all over the place. Alex Grinch, credit to him for figuring out what Baylor was doing on that on that quarterback run game because it felt like he didn't have any counter for the QB counter, for the QB draw, for the QB power. Nothing in the playbook. He figured it out. They held Baylor scoreless in the second half after giving up 31 points. I need to add to this that last year, Baylor scored 33 points in a loss. 66-33, a little bit different, but you get where I'm going here. Both Lincoln Riley and Alex Grinch did something that I haven't seen them both do collectively all year. They actually made adjustments that worked in the second half of a football game and in a, and scored 24 points in the second half after scoring just 10 in the first and held Baylor scoreless. Charlie Brewer had only thrown four picks all year. He threw one to a linebacker at Oklahoma. And I get to say linebackers with some measure of joy this time instead of yelling about Ricky DeBerry and Mike Stoops. I'm, a, I'm, in, the, I'm in my mention. My mentions was on fire tonight, y'all. Like, like about, I want to say a dozen of y'all got blocked. And I don't know that I'm going to unblock you because it takes a lot for me to block somebody on Twitter because I usually let it fly because I'm as, as passionate as anybody that's ever going to be out there talking about Oklahoma or college football, period. And this game had it coming out of me as well because I even was led to tweet the video of the schooner because I was like, look, we was wrong. Schooner didn't wreck against West Virginia. Schooner wrecked against Baylor. But no, Lincoln said, I got this. Jalen Jalen finally said, I got this. And Gabe Burkich, my goodness, 12 for 12 this year and one for one when OU's fandom's booty hole is collectively clinched. I was, check it out. When they were driving to, to, to tie this game up, I was like, yo, I feel like puking. I don't like being this nervous about stuff that I don't have any control over. I'm a control freak. I don't like it no, I don't like it no way, no how. So which, you know, I, I try to, to give people the outlet and whatnot. And I was like, all right, you know, retweet if you uh, were puking or you wanted to puke because you were so nervous on the last drive and like if you, you know, lie to James Devil. And to my great satisfaction and my great pleasure, everybody was like, no, nope, that was me. I was ready to puke. I was ready to lose my cookies over this game, over this trash game against the team. And Richards literally put her thumb on the scale to get him into the Big 12 
Ain't nobody want him in the Big 12. There wasn't nothing in the Big 12 until RG3. And now we're talking about Baylor being the impediment to Oklahoma perhaps getting into a third consecutive and fourth overall college football playoff for which they may actually have to play again in the Big 12 championship game in Jerry World. It's going to be fascinating, a lot of fun. This game had everything, including a win for Oklahoma, which is the point. This is a rapid reaction video. I usually do these passionately. There's not a whole hell of a lot of analysis in this. I save that for Sunday. But man, if you thought that this game was bonkers, please tell me how in the comments below. If you thought this was a game Baylor was going to win, please pour one out for yourself. I'm going to drink some tea. Deuces.